Welcome back to West Texas View. Welcome back to the West Texas View. It's a pleasure to have Dr. Melinda Morris here. Uh, she's board certified in uh, uh, OBGYN and also uh, nutrition uh, 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 health. And so we've been talking about preventive medicine and she's been really uh, explaining how important proper weight is. And um, one of the things I wanted to say is I, d I just think it's necessary for every person to have a, a, a scale because we eat so much more than we think we eat. And so if you don't weigh your food and get in a, a mindset about how much is a, a, a proper proportion of meat or, or something, you'll just naturally overeat. Well, and, and that's some of the things that have started contributing to that, is that the portion size is so much larger. And the restaurants everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, now you get, you know, they bring your dinner out on a platter, uh -huh. where you used to have dinner on a little dinner plate. Uh -huh. uh, you know, so the portions have changed. Um, you know, the quality of food has changed. You know, the fast foods just don't have the nutrition, um, you know, that the more organic natural foods have. Uh -huh. uh, the biggest issue I see is the consumption of soda, um, you know, which is so unhealthy, especially mm -hmm. for the young children, you know, because there's no nutritional value in mm -hmm. there. It's it's very acidic, and it's very high in sugar, and our bodies weren't designed to continuously intake, you know, sugar. Mm -hmm. um, sugar has a very adverse effect on the body, and but even aspartame or or yeah. some of the light sodas also affects you. Well, and, and you know, that, that's an issue too, is that people assume if they drink a diet soda that that's going to be okay and that's going to keep them from gaining weight. And they finally done the studies that show that even diet soda increases your weight as well. Uh -huh. um, and the reason that this is working is that even those artificial sweeteners um, are still raising your insulin levels, uh -huh. okay? Now, insulin is the hormone that allows your body to regulate sugar. And insulin is the hormone, you know, that diabetics, um, you know, don't produce enough of. And so uh -huh. that's what diabetes is, is an inadequate production of insulin. But things can start very early on as far as changing the amount of insulin that you produce morning, and everyone. increasing your risk for diabetes. Yesterday, yesterday and I tell patients, day. anybody can make themselves a diabetic if they take in too much sugar for a prolonged period of time or gain too much weight. Mm -hmm. um, that's what adult onset diabetes is. That's different from the, the genetically determined uh, onset of diabetes. But what happens is that when you intake sugar, your body releases insulin in response to that sugar to allow the sugar to go into cells. And the more sugar you, you know, intake, the more insulin your body has to produce. And after a while, your body just gets used to these high sugar levels. So it's taking more and more insulin to do the same job. And that's what eventually becomes what's termed insulin resistance. Because your body has been exposed to so much sugar for such a prolonged period of time that now it's taking very high levels of insulin to do the same mm -hmm. job and, and take care of that sugar level. Mm -hmm. And high insulin levels have adverse impact. Oh, it um, does damage to your body that's yeah. insidious. You don't know it's doing all that damage. And so a lot of the problems that develop from the obesity is, is a result of the high insulin levels. And kind of the ultimate, you know, adverse result of all this over time, and we're talking about 10, 15, 20 years of prolonged obesity, um, you know, you're 15, 20, 75, 100 pounds overweight with these high insulin levels is that you develop a, bet, a disorder called metabolic syndrome. Uh -huh. That's kind of the ultimate adverse effect from a prolonged exposure to a lot of sugar and obesity, high insulin levels. Uh -huh. Metabolic syndrome consists of obesity, diabetes, high cholesterol levels, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease. Uh -huh. And you know people that have all of these disorders. They have all five of these disorders, and that's a direct result of prolonged obesity over time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the, this disease process progresses slowly over time. So, you know, 
can't make, undo them. And you can't, you can't immediately fast. undo it, and you can't go to your doctor once it's progressed to that point and say, okay, give me a pill and fix me. Um, because early on, some of that damage can be reversed. But as it progresses over time, some of that damage cannot be mm -hmm. reversed. And all you can do is, is help kind of maintain the disease process mm -hmm. that's there. Um, you know, you can give medication to try to help improve the glucose levels, but you still have diabetes. Mm -hmm. You can give medication to try to bring the blood pressure down, but you still have hypertension. You can give statin drugs to lower the cholesterol, but you still ha are at risk for cardiovascular disease. You know, so that's why prevention is so important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can keep your weight under control, if you can prevent, you know, the development of diabetes, um, you know, your health is going to be so much better long term. And and diabetes is a terrible disease. It is a terrible disease. You just, you just cannot imagine all of the bad effects until you've had it or had someone yeah, in your family yeah. with it. Yeah. One other thing that uh, you you mentioned is is our younger generation and how their um, uh, life rate is is going to be less than than their parents it, it, it's because of we've got so many more obese children but how how is it to deliver a baby uh, whose mother is obese does that does that child inherit uh, fat sales or <laughs> what effect does that have? Well, they've, a they've actually done some studies on that and they, they show that babies that are born overweight or obese um, are at risk for de increased risk for developing diabetes in their lifetime. So, you know, these adverse health effects can begin at birth and there's kind of a misconception that, you know, the bigger and, and the, the more my baby weighs, the healthier my baby uh -huh. is and that's not necessarily mm -hmm. the case. And you're um, starting it off. You're starting it off early. Wrong. Very early. early. Uh -huh. And you know, so even the obstetric, even the pregnant patients, you know, I'm counseling them on weight management. Uh -huh. um, you know, because some ladies think, you know, if they gain 50 or 60 pounds during their pregnancy, that means they're having a healthy pregnancy, and that's a total misconception. Yeah. Um, you you want it more like 20 pounds or yeah. 15 I mean, pounds. Yeah. 20 <laughs> to 40 pounds is the average, mm -hmm. but if you're already obese when starting your pregnancy, then there you, you may not want to gain more than even 10 pounds during mm -hmm. that pregnancy. So there's a lot of nutritional counseling and weight management that's recommended to try to prevent those adverse outcomes. This has been so interesting. We're going to have to have Dr. Morris to come back next week and continue this conversation. I haven't even gotten to the list of questions that we were to talk about, nor have we talked about vitamins. So we'll be back next week with another program. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining us for News West 9's West Texas View with Johnny Lou Avery. This has been a public affairs presentation of KWAB-TV and KWES-TV.